accounting adjustments problem five. Zucchini Inc. experienced the following three events in year one. Perform counseling services for $26,800 cash. On February 1st, year one, paid $18,600 cash to rent office space for the coming year and adjusted the accounts to reflect the amount of rent used during the year. Complete and calculate the following. Record events using the accounting equation. Prepare the balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows. Ignoring future events, what is rent expense that would be recognized in year two? We have a lot to do. It's really important that we focus by going through the accounting equation first. That's what it's asking us to do. Record the events using the accounting equation. Let's start there. That will help us with the other items. Of course, in our accounting equation, we've got assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now, looking at the specific accounts, and we have three transactions, A, B, and C, the accounts involved for assets, we're going to have cash, and we're also going to have prepaid rent. So this is going to deal with prepaid expenses. For liabilities, we're actually not going to have any liabilities. And then for our equity, we're dealing with a corporation here, Zucchini Inc. We're just going to look at the retained earnings. If we have any effect to retained earnings, we'll also note the specific accounts that are affected in retained earnings, whether it's revenue, expenses, withdrawals, dividends, whatever it is. Let's go through A. Transaction A, we're told perform counseling services for $26,800 cash. So any effect to assets? Yes. We have an increase in cash, $26,800. Any increase to prepaid rent? No increase to prepaid rent, so we can move on from that one. What about retained earnings? Anything to retain earnings? Well, we're receiving cash for performing counseling services. Yes, we do have revenue. $26,800 of revenue. And revenue increases retained earnings and our accounting equation balances. So $26,800 on the left, $26,800 on the right. Let's go to transaction B. On February 1st, year one, paid $18,600 cash to rent office space for the coming year. We have a reduction in cash, $18,600, and we have an increase in prepaid rent. Prepaid rent is an asset because it's a future benefit of renting out space. So prepaid rent goes up by $18,600, and the equation balances. Transaction C, adjusted the accounts to reflect the amount of rent used during the year. Well, some of you might be wondering, what the heck, what, what, what amount is it, or what, what do we do? Well, if we're not told in a problem, we assume that a company is calendar year. If we purchased the prepaid rent on February 1st for $18,600 cash for the coming year, that means, based on the information, we're getting one year worth of prepaid rent when we purchase that $18,600 of rent. So think about it. We're on February 1st. February 1st, and let's do the calculation below. February 1st to December 31st is how many months? And if you want to count them, you can use your fingers, toes, whatever. You have February 1st to December 31st. That's 11 months. The idea is that it's all months except January, so it's 11 out of 12 months. That $18,600 amount, that was attributable to 12 months. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 11 months over 12 months, that fraction, and we're going to multiply that by 18,600. And when you do that, you're going to get $17,050. Now that's being used up because we're saying we adjusted at the end of the year, at the end of year one, to reflect that the retain the prepaid rent has been reduced. So we're going to reduce prepaid rent by $17,050. And then retained earnings, we have rent expense. This is an expense. Remember, prepaids turn into expenses. So we have a rent expense amount of $17,050 and increase in expense decreases retained earnings. So our equation balances. Now notice if we look at our balances in cash, prepaid rent, liabilities are zero, retained earnings. Cash, we have a balance of $8,200. Prepaid rent, we have a balance of $1,550. Now if we take one month over 12 months and multiply that by $18,600. $18,600. Go ahead and do that. What number do you get? You got it, 1550. 
because the idea is that next month, that 1550, that's attributable one month, that's going to be January of year two, just January of year two, attributable just to that month. No liabilities, and then retained earnings, the balance is going to be 9750. Does the left equal the right? Yes. If we add these two numbers, we get 9750. 9750 equals 9750. Our equation balances. All right, so we have that. Now what we can do is go through and do the income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows, and we can also answer the last question. All right, so let's start first with our income statement. Income statement is very easy. We're just taking revenue minus expenses based on these problems. So income statement. So revenue minus expenses. We have revenue here, expenses. So revenue is 26800 Expenses, $17,050. We have $9,750. That is our net income for these transactions. So we have net income of $9,750. Next, we have our balance sheet. Let's go ahead and do that one. So balance sheet. This is always my favorite. We have our assets on the left, our liabilities, and stock orders equity on the right. With the stock orders equity, we're just going to do retained earnings here. Keep it simple. So our assets, we have two, cash and prepaid rent. And we look at our balances. Cash balance, 8200 Prepaid rent, 1550. We're looking at the end of this year. 8200, 1550. We get our total, 9750. Liabilities, zero. Retained earnings, 9750. Add those up. We get 9750. That's our balance sheet. Pretty simple. Moving on to our statement of cash flows. Again, if you're doing the accounting equation, you're asked to do a statement of cash flows. Just focus on the cash column. That's all you have to do. You have two items. So our statement of cash flows, we've got two items, and both items affect the operating activities. And the reason why is because they're revenues and expenses. Or I should say they deal with revenues and expenses. So operating activities, that's all we have here, operating. We've got the 26800 that's cash receipt from revenue. And the amount is 26800 And then B, we have cash payment for rent, which is a reduction of 18600 Now, notice I said rent, not rent expense, because remember, we paid for the rent in advance. So it does affect expenses though. So our net cash from operating activities equals $8,200, which is the balance in cash. Now you just roll down that number. The net cash change is also $8,200. There's no beginning balance in cash because we're not given that. And then the ending cash balance will equal $8,200. So that's the statement of cash flows. So we finished our financial statements that we need to do. All we have left is our last question, so we can eliminate what we've done already, prepared all the statements. Just what is the rent expense that would be recognized in year two? Well, all we have left in our prepaid rent account is 1550. That's all we have left, just that 1550 amount. So assuming that we don't purchase more rent expense, we just go with, go with what the information we have. In year two, the beginning in January, because remember, we purchased this on February 1st, year one, for a year. So February 1st, year one, we purchased 12 months worth of rent, $18,600 worth of rent, $1,550 per month. That means it's going to last us through January 30th, sorry, January 31st of next year. January 31st of next year, of year two. That means in year two, what is the amount of rent expense? Assuming nothing else changes based on the information we have, it's just going to be the 1550 balance that we have left. And that's really it for the problem.